Hi friends, welcome back to JK Dentis. Today we are going to study some basics of implantology. Influence of abutment diameter on marginal bone and concept of platform switching. First, we will study about implants. So as the name says, implant. Plant means to rope. So we can say implant is a man-made device used to replace the biological structure or to enhance the structure or to support it. It is contrast to that of transplants which are replacing the living structure. Now implants are of mainly three types. Epiosteal implants which can say over the bone. Transosteal implants which we say through and through in the bone and endosteal implants which we say as inside the bone. You can remember it by this logic that is over through and inside. Now we will first see subperiosteal implant. In the subperiosteal implant there is framework over the jaw bone and over that periosteum is laid. This design is not used nowadays because of invasive surgical procedures. The second is Transosteal implant, which is also said as staple bone implant or transmandibular implant. In this, implant is penetrating two cortical plates and there is extra oral surgery required for the placement of metal plate. This design is discontinued because of two surgeries involved. Now, there is intramucosal implants. In this, tugs are being placed and it is causing injury to the tissues. That's why this design is also not used. The most commonly used design is endosteal implants. It is of three types like root form implants, ramus frame implants or blade cylindrical and screw form implants. We will first see about the design of implant. The implant have divided into apical portion and body. This is apex, this is body of implant and the upper portion at the crest is crest module. In the second diagram, you will see there is implant. Abutment is placed over the implant and over the abutment there is placement of crown. The junction between the implant and the abutment is implant abutment junction or implant abutment interface. When the abutment and implant are fused to each other, that is one piece implant. And when they are not fused, that is two piece implant. Two piece implant requires two surgeries. First surgery for the placement of implant and after three months for the procedure of prosthesis, that is placement of abutment. The most common problem we encounter after placement of implant is marginal bone loss around the neck of the implant or we can say as crestal bone loss. We are going to study response of bone in regular platforms as well as platform switched implants. So what is platform matching or we can say as normal regular implants. You can see this is the abutment and the implant. The abutment is of same diameter that of the implant. This design was earlier more common but it led to more crestal bone loss. We will see why the bone loss is more in such kind of designs. So during the functional movements there is micro gap at the implant abutment junction. Because of the movement, there is micro leakage and because of the micro leakage, there is proliferation of inf inflammatory cell infiltrate and this area gets filled by the inflammatory cells. Because of the sustained inflammation in this area, there is activation of osteoclast. Osteoclast is considered as bone resorbing cells. And this will eventually lead to crestal bone resorption. Second cause of bone resorption is biological width. Biological width is a soft tissue 
dimension over the coronal portion of the crest of bone now and it is attached to the tooth or we can say to the implant biological width will act as a seal which will prevent microorganisms so biological width will maintain crestal bone resorption but in the normal platform there is no room for the attachment of fibers so to make room for the attachment of fibers there is crestal bone resorption to maintain the width so in the normal case of abutment we are facing the problem of crestal bone resorption so there come a concept of platform switching which says it can compensate for the problem of crestal bone loss so what is platform switching in this there is a smaller diameter abutment attached to the larger diameter implant collar so because of that you can see there is formation of horizontal step so there is a horizontal circular step in this area this step leads to prevention of inflammatory cells how come there will be less inflammatory cells in this area basically platform switching will help in four main formats that is shifting of inflammatory cells second maintaining the biological width third reducing the influence of micro gap and last decreasing the stress level we will see all this one by one first is shifting of the inflammatory cells as you can see there is a horizontal step formation so the inflammatory cells are shifted inward that is they are shifted towards the central axis and away from the crestal bone because of that the inflammatory process is reduced at the crestal bone this will help to reduce crestal bone loss along with that according to the literature it will help in optimum load distribution second is by biological width as there is formation of this horizontal step it will lead to making the implant abutment junction away from the crest that is it helps in repositioning of implant abutment junction because of that additional horizontal soft tissue will be present which will make room for laying fibers of biological width and that will lay horizontal biological width in this way we can maintain the biological width and prevent bone loss the third one is when you see in platform matching there is surface area of 180 degree that is there is direct contact of inflammatory cells with the hard as well as soft tissues while when we go for platform switching the surface area is about 90 degree this space helps to form fibers along with that it helps to reduce exposure of inflammatory cells and it has influence on the micro gap this will help in confinement of the inflammation to a smaller area earlier as it was 180 degree there was not confinement of the inflammation the next is implant abutment junction is shifted that is shifting of the micro gap the inflammatory cell is minimized in the area of crestal bone eventually the stress concentration is also shifted which led to less stress and has prevented bone loss so in this way we can protect the bone by platform switching but platform switching comes with some limitations what are the limitations we always require a larger diameter implant second 
smaller size abutment may compromise our emergence profile. For this, we require at least 3 mm of the soft tissue. Otherwise, resorption will occur. And last is, undersizing of the components need to be done in all the stages. That is, if we are going for a small abutment, we need to go for a small prosthesis. So, we need to see all these limitations while planning for platform switching. So, to understand the concept of platform switching will help us to reduce the marginal bone loss along the implant neck. So, with this, I hope the substantial understanding of platform switching will help you in placement of implants and reduce its bone loss. Thank you so much and if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel JK Dentis. Thank you.